Welcome to another Foolish Thoughts episode. This is Joseph Barone, aka A Fool for Learning, your training and learning consultant. And our foolish thought for today is The Gatekeeper, Part 3. Once again, I have Sylvester Justino with me. Sylvester is a government affairs consultant at the Bennett Group DC. His practice focuses on appropriations, transportation, labor, energy, state government affairs, crisis communications and response, and political outreach. He has served as an appointed official at the state level and at the federal level. He, has, he was the deputy director of the Office of Public Liaison at the U.S. Department of Labor during the previous presidential administration. Our last episode, we talked about what are some of the common roadblocks or gates that you encounter with the gatekeepers and what are some of your strategies to open those gates. But in this episode, Sylvester, with you, I want to take a look based on your experience about what are some of the, the skills needed for the job to help you do your job effectively, those strategies. Mm -hmm. so, so, Sylvester, why don't I throw it out to you and why don't you take a shot at maybe the first one. What's the first one? And it, they don't have to be in any particular oh, order, no. by the way. Sure, no, sure. Uh, it, I think the first thing is persistence. Uh, to when you make that connection with, with somebody in an organization that you want to work with, collaborate with, do business with, uh, is and, and you don't get that response, you don't get that feel of, I'm really being listened to, this is going to happen soon, be persistent. Uh, find those people, with, work with the person that you met, but also uh, find others within the organization that you're looking to make contact with and to leverage your network. Uh, see who might know somebody over there. You never know. Yeah, and you talked about it that in the last episode about using your network and using LinkedIn and your network mm -hmm. to see Very how can you have them introduce you or maybe uh, they can you can use their name to help you with an introduction. Excellent, excellent. What's, a, what's another uh, skill that you need to have in order to do this job? Uh, I also think that being patient uh, is important. Um, we are all busy professionals. We all have deadlines to meet. We all have work to do. Um, sometimes you may have a matter that may be urgent to you, but may not be urgent to the person that you met or encountered, and uh, you have to be patient. Um, it's I, I, it's a virtue. It, it's a virtue for a reason, um, and certainly one that I struggle with. All, <laughs> I think all too often. <laughs> I think many of us struggle with that one. <laughs> so we got perseverance. We've got patience. What's a third one? Uh, I think the other thing is to be resilient, uh, you know, and be ready to hear bad news. Uh, you know, you may have to, uh, you know, you may have a great opportunity in front of you. You may have an issue that need that you think is important, uh, but also be ready and be resilient enough to hear a no, um, and uh, that it's not personal against you. Uh, you. You know, it, it's nothing to take away from your dignity mm -hmm. uh, as uh, for the issue or opportunity that you're working on. Okay. And, and I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to put you on the spot. Sure. How many no, if you say percentage of no's versus percentage of yes, maybe over your entire mm. career, not just in this job right now, but maybe over. What what can an average person expect? No's versus yeses. Uh, I you get a fair <laughs> amount. It, I would say it's not a it's not a no. It's a maybe not right now. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, that's that's the best. It's uh, you get you get yes, but um, yes, I like this idea. Yes, I like this opportunity, but. Uh, it is not the right time to do this. Okay. And I think one, when we were uh, talking before, uh, you know, don't take it personally if you can't get in front of the right person that you're trying to see, get uh, to talk to mm -hmm. or make uh, engage in business with. Um, because you know what? There may be another opportunity down the road. Uh, something else could come up. You know, there could be turnover. 
there could be something that changes uh, in, in what you're looking to achieve. Changes in the economy uh, that where you go, oh, well, here's a different op avenue for us to work together on. So, so I think you, you almost alluded to a whole other skill that you, in, in saying your last thing, which is you need to be open to something in the future with this person, with yeah. this office. Very important. Um, I think, you know, in business, it's all about timing. Uh, it's all about opportunity. But uh, sometimes they don't match. And when you build that relationship with this other company or uh, organization that you're looking to engage with, it may you may not get very far now, but in three months it could be mm -hmm. completely different. Uh, there may be uh, something else that comes along. Uh, so always be mindful of that, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know again, don't take it personally. And there was one other we talked about, but you sort of alluded to this during the perseverance piece, and and I call it the research. Yes, the ability to do research. Can you talk a little bit about yep. the skill of having that ability to do research? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think the research part is important because you may have a great opportunity to talk to a CEO at a networking event, and, and I can't stress enough uh, the importance of networking at events for whatever business you're in. Uh, you know, I, I, for some people, it's not easy to go to them, but I encourage all of you uh, who are out there to network as much as you can. And uh, I think doing that work, doing that research, uh, finding out what that organization is going through, uh, the challenges that they are encountering, but also uh, see who else on the team within that organization that may help you. You know, oftentimes it may not be the CEO, it may be a vice president, um, you know, who handles completely different things. Um, so that research part is very important. You know, you mentioned networking, and I think as someone who's been out on their own, one of the hardest things that I've had to do is I've had to learn how to network. Mm -hmm. Because sure. when I was working with my last organization, there was no need to go out and network. You found out who was responsible for training in this area. You call them up and said, hey, I'm so-and-so, I need training, whether I need it, my staff need it, or we need to create it. So there was no networking of that sort of stuff. And I had to learn the whole process of networking. Yeah. And, I, and I guess one of the, the big things is you have to be willing to invest the time to network, yes. as you mentioned, in fundraising events, in charitable events, in professional association events. Very important. Um, I think, you know, how you and I met, we met through a, a, a networking organization for, uh, for individuals of our common background. And there's so many of them out there. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a fraternal organization. It's a business mm -hmm. organization. You can, you can ask for help. I think for the majority, there are, the, I, I think, most people who join these organizations do it because they want to help themselves, but they also, more importantly, want to help others. Uh, they want to help others succeed to find growth and business opportunities uh, and to give something back to their community. I, there's, I've learned the hard way that there's, no, there's nothing wrong with asking to network, ask advice build that relationship mm -hmm. with, with people who are either in your business or outside of it. Uh, you know, it, it, you'll never, you never know where networking can take you. And I think in talking about networking, it leads me to another skill I think you have to have, and that's the ability to do some sort of public speaking. Now, I, I don't mm -hmm. think in, in, the, in your business, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Sylvester, you have to get up and pitch to 500 people, an audience of 500 people. Sure, yeah, yeah no, it, in my business, I've had to do You've that. you had to do that? Oh, sure, yeah. Okay. I, I've had to give presentations and briefings. Okay, so we've got the public speaking in the sense of the large group giving out and giving that formal presentation, yep. doing that Q&A. So you, you have to build up that skill or at least go somewhere to learn how to do it properly. But I also think in, in relation to the networking, it's what everyone calls that that 
30 second elevator pitch. Yes. Yeah. And can you can you talk just a bit about that? I think an elevator pitch is is really great to have. Uh, what I, what has worked for me is not overcomplicating it. Um, I've learned, uh, you know, we is an elevator pitch. They, I think I have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, my what I've learned is telling somebody who, who doesn't know me of this is who I am, this is what I work on, this is how I want to work with you, and saying I'd love to follow up with you. I'd love to look. I how do I get in touch with you? How do how do we set up a time for a one-on-one -on -one meeting or consultation uh, about how we can help each other? Um, it's uh, it's so important to have that pitch down. Um, and sometimes you have it, and sometimes you don't. But uh, at least have an idea of of and be confident in going. Hi, this is who I am. How can I help you? You know, and even though I I do a lot, I've done a lot of public speaking. You know, being in the training business now, thirty five years. One of the things that I really had to learn was that elevator pitch, and it took mm -hmm. me. I realized the first couple of times I tried to introduce myself to people at networking events. I just bombed. And yes. here I am, a person who has done hundreds of, of talks in front of organizations, training uh, hundreds of people, and I bombed. And it took me a while to hone that elevator pitch down to that, who am I, what do I do, how, how I can help you as an organization better yourself. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to do that because I know the first couple of times I blew it and I probably may even blow, have blown some potential business, but it, you, you kind of learn from your mistakes. Yeah, it happens to all of us. I mean, I, I, that's happened to me. Um, I, I, it, earlier in my career, I would get intimidated talking to you know uh, members of Congress or VIPs until I realized that they were just normal people mm -hmm. like I am mm -hmm. and that uh, they will respect you more if you just go up and start talking to them and making that connection. Um, but I, I think it's it, it's something that you can't teach in a classroom, but you if you work with uh, colleagues and, and, and how to develop a network or how to gain that confidence, uh, you, you only be doing yourself a service by, by doing that. Yeah, and, yeah absolutely. And, and one last skill I think, and again, this is from me looking into what you do and how you do it, and that is being able to put together a good email, some good mm -hmm. basic writing skills. I think that's really important. How to compose an email that is concise, yeah. to the point, that doesn't ramble on for pages and pages. And um, maybe you can expand upon that a little bit. Sure. Yeah. No. Uh, I think uh, the best thing that works for me is keeping things short and sweet to the point. Um, but you know what's also great is that there are resources out there for all of us to use to better make our messaging more clear and concise. There's ChatGPT, there's uh, other AI programs that are out there that you can uh, uh, talk, get your thoughts out, and it will uh, make something really interesting for the reader. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, But it, it's all a learning process. Mm -hmm. And, and to figure out which one works best for you. Exactly, yes. Excellent. So just as a quick recap, some of the skills that you need is perseverance. Yes. Patience. Yes. The ability to accept to to accept rejection, accept that no. Yeah. Okay. Um, the ability to be open, and I guess that goes along with the patience piece, the ability to be open to future work. We can't do anything now. Maybe we can do something in a year or two now. Correct, and 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 chronicling that in your, uh, what, however you keep your documentation of going. Okay, well, I met this person uh, in April, and now it's November. They said they would be ready in six months. Let's see where things are today. Um, I think that's it's a good way to uh, build your portfolio out. We also talked about research. Yes, we also talked about public speaking and especially that elevator pitch mm -hmm. yes. and finally writing good writing skills we're not asking you to do war and peace but we're asking you to be able to put together a good solid email a good solid letter correct okay so Sylvester thank you so much for being with me today for the third part 
of the episode on gatekeepers. And Sylvester, if our listeners want to get a hold of you, maybe they have a question, maybe they're interested in hiring you to help them get in front of a particular CEO or or legislative uh, uh, member of Congress uh, or some other business, how, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Sylvester Justino, and I look forward to uh, helping in any way I can. Sylvester, once again, thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you. I greatly appreciate you taking your time uh, over the last uh, the, the three episodes in total. Uh, being with me and sharing your knowledge and your experience with my listeners. Same here, and thank you for having me on, and uh, this was very educational for me as well. Great, fantastic. Uh, for listeners, if you learned something from this episode, please take a moment to like, comment, subscribe, or share with a friend. And to learn more how I can assist you and your organization with an appropriate learning solution to meet your business needs, please visit my website at afoolforlearning.com. This is Joseph Barone, a.k.a. A Fool for Learning, signing out. Remember, learn, perform, succeed.